G'day guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I make these 65mm jointed swim baits for bass and mangrove jack. They're just a smaller version of the 110mm swim bait here. If you haven't seen the video for this guy, I'll chuck a link in the description below so you can go check it out. I've made a batch of these already, I've tried and tested them. I got a nice bass on this one the other day. Let's see if that'll focus. A really nice bass on this fella and the purple and magenta. Um, the reason I'm making another one is just because these are all very fluoro reaction colours. Um, so I'm just going to make a nice uh, realistic poly potty mullet colour and then it should be perfect just for bass and jacks. So yeah, let's get into it and I'll show you how I make my micro swim baits. So I just use pine for these little fellas. And um, yeah, let's go cut him out. So I've just got my center line marked and my lines for the joint. I'm going to come in and cut in, not all the way, just so it's still holding there and then I'll shape the body. So there we go, it's about a meal of wood there, holding it on. And then once I finish shaping the body, then I can break it off. Um, you just don't want to cut it off and shape the body in two separate halves, because then it's really hard to get it all symmetrical and lined up. So yeah, that's why you leave it attached, and don't break it off until after you've completed the sanding and shaping of the body. So I'm just going to put the profile into this bait now. Um, I always do it by eye. I never really mark any. I just mark a center line and don't really mark any other lines, really, guidelines. I find if I mark lines, I always screw it up and I always go too far on one side. So I usually just eyeball it, especially on these smaller baits. And, um, and yeah, they usually turn out really nice and symmetrical. I just find it easier that way for me. That's to excuse the birds, too. They're going off today. Loud little buggers they are. So there you go, there's the profile. I get it really nice and symmetrical just by my eye. So that's why I stick to that. Um, yeah, I just can't seem to follow lines for some reason. Yeah, I just go by my eye and yeah, turns out good. All right, let's go finish shaping this guy up and drill some lead holes. So we go, there's the lead holes. All they have is one of these tiny little ball sinkers just in the front, and then half of one of those in the tail. And that just gives it that good flexion point in the head and allows it to sit nice and steady in the water on the fast retrieve. And then that back of the tail still has a lot of wiggle and movement while the head here has that side roll, just like that. 
So I'm gonna now it's gonna give this guy some chamfers and finish sanding him up and getting completely shaped. There we go, just got finished sanding. The profile's really nice. Now I'm just going to fill these lead holes and sand them back. Um, and then once that's all sanded back, I'll get working on the hardware for the screw eyes and the joint connector. So, the front hole here. It's just going to get one of these little ball sinkers. I think they're about three and a half grams, I think. Um, I dug it, I drilled it a bit too deep, so I'm gonna... So all I do, all I use to fill in my holes is just some fine wood dust out of the belt sander. Um, and then I just fill it up and then just super glue it in and it works a treat. So all I do is I put a bit in. Put a bit in and then I'll press it down with a pencil just like that drop the sinker in put some glue in get it nice and firm and then just add some more on top press it in And then just repeat that step, that process. So as you can see, you just build it up that little bit higher so you can shape it down to the profile of the body. But I find that works really well, that method of filling it up. It's really easy to sand back, but it also finishes nice and sturdy, rock hard, so without adding a lot of weight. So yeah, that's how I now fill in my holes. So for the back hole, here, I don't want as much weight, so I just cut one of these ball sinkers in half with a pair of snips. 
and that seems to be the perfect amount. And same deal. Sit him in. You just want to make sure your, your lead holes are really nice and centered on your bait, just so he'll swim nice and straight. Some glue on top, and then pack that sawdust in. There you have it. Let that dry for a couple of minutes. She's ready to carve. You can see the front one's already rock solid. Yeah, that's how I fill in my holes now, and I really like it. It's a very simple system. So swim baiting is becoming very popular here in Australia. Um, I've just started getting into it, and it's a really fun way to fish. It's very enjoyable to catch a fish on a swim bait. Um, you know, I just look how hard this is. Ready? That is rock hard, harder than the timber, harder than the pine. That's why it's a good way to fill it up. Look at that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's getting super popular and for good reason. It's a, such an effective way to catch fish. Um, you know, I got my first bass on this guy the other day. And yeah, it was such a good feeling to catch one on there. And it's a good way to catch bigger fish. So I haven't actually fished for mangrove jack with you know, my swim baits yet. Because we've you know, the rivers are pretty brown because of the flood. So, um, But I'm really looking forward to getting out there. And I think they're going to have to smash it. Like, the way these run, the design of these little baits and the amount of weight I put in them, um, you know, they run just subsurface, but you can let them sink. They sink probably like a foot in two seconds, I, I'd guess, roughly around that. But um, yeah, they just sink and then you just bring them up and they just, and he just sits subsurface and he just shakes, shakes his little booty, his head rolls, and you can burn them in real fast, like get a real nice reaction strike. So. I'm really keen to get out there and try and fish with them and try and get a jack. Um, my biggest challenge is so far with these guys is just getting the hardware in there, the um, getting the hardware in nice and secure. I can get the hook hangers in really secure, no problem, but just the middle joint here, getting it to friction fit, friction fit. Getting used to talking to the camera still. Getting it to friction fit uh, correctly because Australian fish fight very, very hard, especially mangrove jack. They are just so aggressive. They come out, they hit your bait, they come out and turn around and hit your bait head on and just straight into the snag. So you've got to just lock your drag. So you're putting a lot of pressure on these little baits. So I've got to make sure I get everything in there nice and secure so I don't hook a fish and just breaks in half and I lose my fish and the fish has half a lure in its mouth. So yeah, swim baiting really taking off in Australia and I'm really enjoying making them. Um, I know over in America and the States it's been a big thing for a long time with the largemouth bass. Um, but yeah, it's now the thing to do in, in Australia so I'm going to make some because they're a lot of fun to make.
If you are just getting into making lures and you don't know what wood to use, radiata pine is one of the best woods you can use for lures in my opinion. I use it, I don't know, 80% of the time probably, depending on what I'm making, especially with small lures. It's a great wood because you can make small lures sink easy, you can make them float easy, you just don't put much lead or much lead, much lead. Much book lead. Sorry, I'm not very good at talking to a camera. I'm getting used to it. Um, what was I talking about? Pine. Yeah. So anyway, it is. Oh my gosh. That's right. It is very buoyant for small lures. So like, if you're using like a little making a little popper or a little top water bass bait. You don't need any weight in it at all, no lead, it'll just float perfectly and you, just the weight of the hook hangers will hold it nice and steady in the water. Um, then, like, with these guys, if you're using little slow sinking little baits, it doesn't need much lead at all to make it sink, so it's a really good wood. It's super easy to work with, carves brilliantly, it sands brilliantly, like it sands back very smooth, it's durable, and yeah, all around it's a great wood. You know, I've used lots of different woods, you know, western red cedar, australian red cedar, coachwood, beech, tallow wood, oregon, which is pine I guess, but um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff and yeah, this stuff is just great, it's inexpensive and you can just go to your local hardware and buy it, it's readily available too, and that's one of the best things about it, and yeah, just go, if you want to get into making lures, just go buy a piece of 20 by 40 pine and you'll be sorted. Alright, what was I doing? Uh, I've got to go make the hardware now. I'll show you how I do that. Well, good start. Sometimes things just don't work out when you're filming, do they? There you go. Oh, it's not going to focus again. Okay, that is your perfect hook hanger. Now you just repeat that a couple times. So I feel like I'm pretty sure I only like half explain the things that I'm doing. Oh yeah. See, I can't get the words out. You know, talking, I've never been a big talker, I'm a quiet person, unless something interests me then I can ramble on about it, but explaining what I'm doing is a bit of an issue, a bit of a, bit of a struggle. <laughs> so, sorry if I only half explain things, I'm trying my best, but I can explain what I'm doing now, I'm cutting down my screw eyes to size. fit properly. They're all cut to size and I need to drill the holes so I can actually put them in the bait. That would help. Uh, I need to bloody cut this thing in half. Finish cutting it in half, that would help. Um, hacksaw blade. Thanks all. That was easy. I wonder how many people would hate to watch me do this using a hacksaw blade on wood. The mood for two. Well, not made for timber. The mood for cutting metal. Yes, they are made for cutting metal. They're also made for cutting lower joints when I don't want to put it back on the bandsaw. It's okay. It's, uh, it's okay to break the rules every once in a while in life. So if you don't like me watching someone use a hacksaw to cut wood with, feel free to subscribe and let me know. There we go. I need to go clean that up on the on Z what's my call it? Man, my brain is not working today, hey. Um 
Oh my god, my brain. Belt sander, Jesus. Bloody hell. Uh, are you gonna focus? Just cleaned up the tail section on the belt sander. Sanded it back a couple mil. Um, just so yeah, it's got that bit more freedom of movement in the joint. So, just gonna get that. Boop, 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 boop. Um, didn't film it. You all know what a band sand, a band sander. Oh my god, my brain isn't working. So there we have it. All the hook hangers and the line tie are in, and that metal joint is just friction fitted in. It's not glued in yet. I glue it in once I finish painting and clear coating. Um, I like to use just the one joint on this swim bait simply because of how loose that tail is. Um, all it does is the action, the head rolls and the tail thumps and kicks just like that. Boop, twists and kicks. Great action in my opinion. Um, if I had a double connection, one at the bottom, one at the top, it would be a much more subtle presentation, which I probably will, will make in the future. Um, but for the time being, I really love that aggressive, aggressive kick to really hopefully come out and get those reaction strikes. So yeah, she's all done, and I gotta go seal it now with some sealer. Yeah. Sorry, I just drifted off thinking about something else. Um, yep, gotta seal it, and I'll be able to paint. There we go, that's done. I'll leave that dry for half an hour and come back and put the second coat on. There we go, bait's all sealed and it's time to paint. Right, check out these guys here. Is there a top water bait for bass and cod? You're gonna have one of the polycarbonate bibs on the front to make it walk on the surface. So that's like a little toxic frog thing. I really like that colourway. And then got a mouse here. Where are we? Got a mouse. Little whiskers on the front. I really like that one too. And then just a good old fashioned Purple, pink, black, silver. It's just such a deadly colour combination, that one. With the big eye. So yeah, I'm really happy with those guys, how they turned out. I didn't make a video of them, but I just made them for myself to fish with. I'll get some photos and have to get some fish with them. But I reckon he looks pretty smee. Turned out good. Alright. Enough procrastinating. Let's get these guys painted. So just starting off with white first. Just a nice white base coat because I'm just going through a natural colour scheme on this one. Alright, next colour is just a bit of pearl white just to make the body shine. Now, next thing to do is I'm going to put some silver scales on. Just going to use a bit of fly screen mesh and just lay it over and then spray. There we go, there's the nice subtle silver scales. There we go, just a bit of bright green. I'm going to come over with some black now. Now yeah, just some transparent black.
There you go, there's the black on the back, ties it in nicely. Just the very basic natural colours there. Um, and now I'll do the gills. So I've just got this little stencil here, and I'm going to give him some red gills to start with. So there we go, just a little bleeding gills. I'll come in with a bit of white on his head there too. Heat set. Always make sure the heat set your paints. Uh, next step is just some pearl platinum in the gills, just to hide that scale detail a bit and give it a bit of a, a nice little shine. Alright, last step is just to come back with some transparent black, tidy up the head and put some little shading around the eyes, just so the eye, make the eyes pop nice. There you have it. Such a simple paint scheme, but really nice. Uh, I think one last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a little red chin here. Just to give him a bit more gill flair. Which is also always good with baits. Especially when they're a fast retrieve bait like this one. Go. That is one finished paint job. Super simple. Definitely going to get me some fish this color. Alright, let's clear coat this guy. So I'll just put some eyes on him. I completely forgot that step. I was mixing the clear coat and remembered I needed eyes. Uh, these are just lit la living eyes or live eyes by Fish Skull. Yeah, looks really nice. Nice and natural, just like a little mullet. There we go, got the first clear coat on. These guys will get a total of two. And we'll pick this video back up when they're finished and dry and it's time to assemble. She is all finished. Got the middle joint in there. You can see. It's nice and secure too. Um, it's probably about 25mm, 30mm long. The screw eye going into each end. So it's going to hold up really good to fish. And be really tough. And yeah, it should catch me some fish. I'm actually going to put some hooks on him now. And hopefully get out there to Savo or tomorrow morning early. And try to get a jack on him. Boop, boop, boop.
boop, 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 boop. My brain isn't working. Much boop, boop, lead.